on 29th of May 2007, when a doing of administrative acumen, political icon and man of the people, Governor T.A. Oji was sworn in as Executive Governor of Abia State, there was a mountain of problems confronting Abia, God's own state. They include poor and decayed infrastructural facilities of the civil service and government machinery. Omaha, the state capital, remained a glorified village, while Aba, the commercial nerve center, was a ghost of herself due to collapsed public infrastructural facilities such as strategic roads linking the major markets and parts of Enyimba city. There was flooding due to blocked major drains and mountains of refuse as well as other social and environmental degradation. The most critical of the problems inherited by the Ochenda administration was a highly divided and marginalized political class. Governor T.A. Oji paints a picture of this gory situation he inherited from the inception of his administration. There were certain projects that the past government didn't remember. I don't know whether they didn't remember it, but they are very essential. And these projects are in other states. One of them is that like we don't have a befitting secretariat for the civil servants who are the engine room of government. The one we have is an old one that is dilapidated and cannot contain all our civil servants. We result that our civil servants are all scattered in town. Minister of Lands is somewhere, Minister of Works is somewhere, Minister of uh, Agric is somewhere. There's no synergy, there's no coordination. And I thought it would be good if we build a secretariat where all the civil servants will stay. It will be a legacy project that we started and that we will complete before we leave office. We looked around again and said, Okporo Dituru has been here donkey years. It is, its capacity is about 400, 500. And Abia does not have any other one. So it will be good if we build a standard international conference where we can have our activities. We are also that can bring in investors, people who come and do talk shows and pay us for the use of the hall, while the upper auditorium also will be there and be maintained. So we decided to start building an international conference center that has a capacity of about 4,500. We have started that and we'll complete it before we leave office. We looked around again and said, ah, look at government house. Government House, we've been operating Government House since the creation of Abia State from a rented house. Where we are staying here, this house belonged to uh, late uh, Vice Marshal, late uh, Michael Mera. He was the owner of this house. All government did was to give him another place and take up here. The Governor's Lodge, Governor's Lodge now, was a guest house. When we were in Imo State, when we were part of Imo State, it was a guest house. So, no befitting government house. We said, okay, the best thing is to start building a standard befitting government house that can compare favorably with others. We have started and we will complete that. We looked at the judiciary. If you go to Omaha, you see that old court that has been there since donkey years. No improvement, nothing. We said, no, it doesn't befit the judiciary. We are looking at executive, judiciary, and the assembly, also legislators. We said, let us touch the judiciary. We first of all started by renovating and modernizing the customary court of appeal that is in Omaha. Now we came up to the judiciary and we're building almost eight court halls Eight court halls. If you pass a correct main road, you see it. That is a legacy project. Not only that, we have done that in Aba. We are doing one in Aba. That's a legacy project. We turn around and said, look, let us look at our broadcasting corporation, BCA. We started building a complex for them of about 48 rooms. We have started, we will complete it. The judiciary also have not finished with the judiciary. Go to the Minister of Justice. 
I remember vividly sometime in this state when I was chief of staff, when the defense of Minister of Justice collapsed, nothing happened to it. It was like that for donkey years. We are now building a new complex for the Ministry of Justice. It is here for people to see. It's almost completed. We looked around and said, our House of Assembly, I agreed with the members of the House. And we are innovating and expanding the place to look modern, befitting for a House of Assembly that is in the state capital. So if you go there, you will also see that. It's there. As a visionary and dogged leader committed to changing this ugly trend in Abia State, Governor T.A. Oji swung into action. During his first tenure in office, Uchindu mobilized progressive Abians to dismantle the anti-democratic forces that had held Abia to bondage. This yielded positive results as Governor T.A. Oji, with the overwhelming backing of Abia leaders of, at all levels, liberated Abia from the shackles of marginalization and political narrow-mindedness. In fact, Governor T.A. Oji took Abia State to the mainstream of national political platform. Ochendo recalls how he achieved this feat of liberating Abia State and the gains of taking Abia to the center stage of politics in the country. First is that the people you are leading must be free to express themselves. They must be free to act the way they should act in accordance with extant laws and regulations. There should be no hindrance to their movement. There should be no hindrance to their expressing their opinion. They should be protected by the fundamental human rights as enshrined in the Constitution. That we achieved. It wasn't here before. Before now, you heard of a political bondage that was in Abia State. What we have done is to liberate Abia from that political bondage to freedom. That happened within my period. Not only liberating Abia from political bondage, we also liberated Abia from spiritual bondage and uplifted them. They are closer to God right now. have that when you liberate a person then you see that development will come he'll have the ambition to pursue his or her goals and with government environment being conducive it is achievable so we achieved liberation first then we achieved also peace and harmony because this liberation brought about peace because without peace there'll be no progress yeah. By liberating Abians, we did what majority, all Abians, not majority, all Abians wanted, especially the stakeholders that own Abia. That was what they wanted. They fought for this for donkey years without succeeding. But eventually, I led the, the battle. They supported me and we won. So, and that brought peace into Abia State. And with that peace, we now moved into one single political system. That is to say, we now moved to the center of politics in other states by joining the ruling party, which is PDP, instead of being in opposition and not gaining anything. And then, we now fought the battle against kidnapping and criminality that nearly ravaged this state. Eventually, we won. There is no doubt that Governor T.A. Oji has not only restored Abia on the path of peace and unity among Abians, but also delivered democratic dividends to Abians in all sectors of development. We are expanding Umaya, the state capital, and the state capital will now have a look of the status of a state capital. So, it is not only Umaya. We are doing all these things in the other senatorial zones. If you go to Abia, 
if you go to Abia State University Teaching Hospital, you see the complex that we are erecting that place that will take care of our, of our medical students and others, and also the doctors who are resident there. It's a very large capacity building. By the time we leave office, it will be completed and people will occupy that place. If you go to Bende, the NYSC secretary, the NYSC camp, it's a very good complex built for our youth coppers. But because of the number of youth coppers that are assigned to Abia State now, the buildings are inadequate. So we decided to go and put up buildings to help them. So we, we have put up four buildings here and they are using them right now. So this is just to give you an insight into the legacy projects that we are doing. Governor T.A. Oji transformed the state capital Omaha by the dualization of virtually all the major roads leading into Omaha, including reconstruction of federal roads to ensure movement in Omaha for all as a public service and commercial state capital. Governor T.A. Oji is relocating Omaha Main Market to Bani Beku and the Omaha Timber Market from another heart of Omaha to Aheki Beku on Omaha Omudike Road. This cap state capital, Omaha, people have been calling it glorified a village. But today, it's now, it's now a glorified town. The market in the center of the city, I say it must go. We found a place away from town for the market, cleared it, and we have started erecting stores. As of today, as I'm speaking with you right now, you have about almost 4,000 stores there. Not only that one, the timber market also, these are, these are things that are in the center of the town. We say we also relocate the timber market. We have started building it. In order to reach the state capital of the menus of mechanic workshops littered in parts of Omaha, the government has relocated mechanics to Ohio Mechanic Village. Also, the spare parts dealers are being relocated to O'Hare Mechanic Village. Other landmark achievements in the construction of public buildings include an ultra-modern auditorium and offices at the Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Women Development Center Complex, Skills Acquisition Center, the Omera Guest Houses, and Customary Court. There is also the Abia State Environmental Protection Agency, Asepa House in Omaha, which are almost being completed. In the health sector, Governor T.A. Oji has recorded monumental achievements with the establishment of two world-class specialist diagnostic centers located on Abar Road, Omaha, near Federal Medical Center and at Abia State Teaching Hospital, Abar. The administration has built and equipped more than 200 health centers as well as renovated general hospitals in the three senatorial zones of the state. The health sector also, that where we have done a lot to keep our people alive, as of today as I'm talking to you, we have made well over 210 health centers all over the state, functional. Then we have in Omaha, a specialist hospital and diagnostic center that is functional, and one in Aba. This one is to take care of the healthcare needs of our people. And then we're also renovating the general hospitals. But the health centers are essential because that is the first port of call for those who are living in the villages. In the education sector, Chief T.A. Oji has transformed the education industry by building and the renovation of myriads of classroom blocks in primary and secondary schools. The administration has equipped the Ministry of Education to guarantee quality control by donating vehicles to the 17 local government education authorities for effective supervision of schools. The government has built and equipped three model libraries in schools in the three senatorial zones of the state, provided free bus service to convey students to and from schools. My education policy, I rate it very high. And you are seeing the result. You are seeing the result. If you go to the literacy profile, Abia is number two. 
literacy profile, Abia is number two. Imo is number one. Abia is number two in literacy profile in Nigeria, not uh, in the Southeast. Then if you now go and check the records of students in the medical schools, in the law schools, the best six, Abia, must, Abia student must be there. The best six, you must see an Abia student in medicine or in law. These are all products of our good initiatives in education. If you come at the secondary school level, all the competitions that are done globally and in Nigeria, before you count three people, first, second, third, it is an Abia child that will be either first, second, or third. Check it out. So what else will I say? These are facts you have to go and verify. And if they are correct, and I know that they are correct, then you know that our education policy is superb. Governor T.A. Oji has distinguished himself in the delivery of democratic dividends to Abians in the construction and reconstruction of roads in the three senatorial zones of the state. Come on board, the first and foremost thing I tackled was construction of roads in the three senatorial zones of the state. And the roads we are building are not political roads. We are building roads where roads are supposed to be. Those roads that touch the lives of our people, those are the roads we are building. That place was a road before, but it turned into a uh, refuse, refuse bin. All the refuse in Aba was dumped there. To the extent that the road went into extinction. But we have recovered the road and built it. We have a pedestrian crossing at Abia Polytechnic that has never happened before. So I told them, take it easy. We know that. Abba roads are very bad. I didn't cause it. It wasn't caused by me. But I made it. I have to fight it. And that is what we are doing. Repairing these roads one after the other. But importantly, checking erosion, flooding. Because that is the cause of the collapse of most of these roads. We are doing that. We are opening the drainages, building new ones, making sure that all water that will come from Aba, will enter into Aba River. We are doing that. We are also tackling the issue of environmental degradation. You know, a lot of refuse is generated by Aba because of uh, its commercial nature. We have bought well over 20 uh, trucks, that is to say compactors, and most of them are consigned to Aba to continue evacuating refuse on daily basis. And that we are doing. The state governor has also done exceedingly well in the provision of rural electrification. You see, when I was giving transformers, like you people wondered, you say, what is this man doing? Giving transformers when there was no light. I knew that light will come one day. So if I give you the transformer, you can keep it. When there's light, you can now fix it. Because I had this one that took you in mind when I was doing that. So having said that, I'm happy today that we have achieved that. We were able to achieve this task of evacuating light from that place. First of all, the federal government that brought light into that place, Transformer. And they did it because of our rapport with them. Like I told you before, 
the government that was in existence was fighting the federal government. And you cannot fight the federal government and expect something from the federal government. You can never. So what we have done is to partner with the federal government. And it is that partnering that has brought about this. The federal government now did that, but they were not able to evacuate the light to the people. What we did was to use the people's money to engage our own contractors to evacuate light to them. So it's the people's money that is going back to them. So today we have steady light in Umwaha and environs by evacuating power from the 132 kva in our here that we did and people are happy for it we want to extend it to arichuku to ohafia to usisioma aba will be taken care of when the ipp in aloji takes off plus the one of geometrics that is in usisioma that one will take care of the whole of aba and the federal government is working assiduously to ensure that it is achieved within a record time. And uh, Geometrics is also working very, very hard to make sure that they produce the power. But for us here, in Umbaha and environs, including Imo State, including Obo in Imo State, they are enjoying steady light due to what we have done and want to sustain it. Today, no month passes without Governor T.A. Orji being constrained to either receive awards for excellent performance or deliver thought-provoking papers for Nigerians to drink from his worth of administrative argument and political dexterity. Based on the all-round good governance, he has continued to give Abians. As Governor T.A. Orji continues to move from one glorious stride in good governance to another, what is needed is for all to sustain their support to his administration in order to fully realize the yearnings and aspirations of Abians of a state where no one is oppressed and where there is milk and honey for all to fully develop their potentials to the glory of God.